Hi everyone, welcome back to the Madeline Makes Great British Bake Off Challenge. It is week two, it is biscuit week. I'm really excited about this. Biscuits, for those of you who don't know, is kind of what the UK folks call cookies, but it's not exactly a cookie. Biscuits tend to be really crisp and they go well with tea. I knew as soon as I watched this episode, I wanted to try to make fig rolls. I personally really love figs. I think they're really underrated and anything spiced I am all about. I'm, I'm sure I've mentioned that before <laughs> either in the last episode which was cake week which if you missed that go back and watch that and make a fruit cake. In the show uh, for this week for the Signature challenge, they made 12 chocolate biscuit bars. For the technical, they did fig rolls. And for the showstopper, they did a 3D biscuit sculpture. I wasn't about to tackle a 3D biscuit sculpture. That is quite a monumental task. So I decided to do the technical challenge this week. But the great thing is I was able to find the exact recipe that was used in the show, which was Paul Hollywood fig roll recipe. So I just pulled that exact recipe and that's what I'll be making today. So pretend I just revealed this from a cloth of gingham. Oh my gosh, can't believe we're making fig rolls. <laughs> okay, all right. I know I'm making fig rolls. I like to overcomplicate things. <laughs> I don't like to. Uh, I'm a gluten-free gal, so I'm doing measure for measure flour. Hopefully that doesn't affect how this will turn out. Hopefully that doesn't affect how this will turn out. The whole idea of measure for measure is that you should be able to use it just like you would regular flour. So. Fingers crossed. Oh, and I don't think I mentioned this. I'm not doing this under a time constraint. I, I'm not gonna do any of these challenges under a time constraint. You need a refresher of the Bake Off, the Madeline Makes Bake Off rules. Here they are. And one of them is that I don't time myself, but I do try to keep it in mind. Maybe someday we'll make these timed challenges. So it calls for Muscovado sugar. Uh, I think that's just brown sugar. I've, I've done that several times before when I make a British recipe that calls for muscovado sugar. I just use brown sugar. I think it's exactly the same. And I'm going to beat this for like five minutes. <laughs> that doesn't look like a lot, but you know, oh well. It's fluffy and pale. <laughs> like me. Just kidding. So here's what we're looking at. It's not a lot. So now what I need to Add the egg. Now the egg, I think, needs to be beaten already. So let me beat it. Just beat it. I'm gonna follow Mr. Hollywood's instructions exactly. Normally I would just put the egg in there, but he is the expert. And according to the Great British Bake Off website where I got this recipe, the difficulty level is, is hard. It's hard. So hopefully, I mean, this will still maybe be a challenge, even if it's not as much as what the bakers would be getting. That looks kind of gross. <laughs> Looking a bit separated. So give it another whisk. See if that see if that helps. If not, then we'll just add the flour and it'll be fine. Okay. Yeah, that's a bit better. It's 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 basically the same. But it's looking a bit better. So this is what we got. It's looking like a dough, so good. I feel like when the recipe was labeled as difficult, it wasn't talking about making the dough. So I probably shouldn't feel too proud of myself quite yet. <laughs> this is a, uh, this is pretty basic. Don't mind me. And I don't think that, that, that is such a weird feeling dough. It really feels like Play-Doh. It's like very supple, yet dry. Does that make sense? Okay, fridge. Okay, got my figs. I have to chop them up pretty, what, how small? Roughly chopped, okay, so not too small. I used to make these granola bars um, back when I was like commuting a lot and trying to be super healthy. Uh, and the base was figs and dates. I would like boil them down into like a syrup and they were delicious. Like, look how wonderful that is. Can you believe that exists in nature? Like, are you kidding me? I'm already excited, it looks so good. Place over medium heat, bring to a boil, then reduce. Okay, let's do it. Okay, so I think it's almost finished. That's looking pretty thick. Thick. I mean, yeah, that looks, 
That's thick and soft. And now I'm gonna blitz it into a paste. Okay. Wow, that is hot. It looks like a paste. I need to take some of this stem ginger in syrup. I had never heard of this ingredient before and I had to go onto Amazon and get it because I couldn't find it anywhere, not even at like health food stores. Very finely chopped this, okay. Wow, this looks amazing. I just wanna eat it. So now I'm gonna add that in here. Let's combine this. It smells so good. I'm surprised that this constitutes as a biscuit by British standards because biscuits are meant to be like crisp and these are quite soft. And I do think in the, in the episode they mentioned that this could be considered by some as a cake, but oh well. So I need to roll this out to 25 by 20. It's not very big. Just gonna roll this out. Trim the edges and cut the rectangle in half. So let's trim the edges. I don't want to waste too much dough. <laughs> right as she says, I don't want to waste any dough. <gasps> okay, so our mix it doesn't look very appetizing, but I'm supposed to half it. This looks very unappetizing. You know what that looks like? Looks like an actual turd. But, you know, okay, so then I think we do this. Using baking paper to help, lift and roll the dough over the filling as you would a sausage roll. You know what I've never made? A sausage roll. I see why baking paper would have been helpful. Oh no. My dough has, no, my dough, no. Oh no. Oh my gosh. <laughs> oh no. My dough is too dry, I guess. Maybe it's been out too long? No, that wouldn't be it. Okay, well, it's better, but it's still not great. Much better though. Okay, Paul would not like that. Okay, so I'm gonna cut them four centimeters each because 25, it's, it's close enough, that's why. That's not very even. The last step is to run a fork along the top to make decorative marks. I think my dough is too, I can't do it. My dough is too hard. It's just gonna sploot it out. All right, so I messed up my dough somehow because I can't make these fork marks without like pushing down hard enough where everything would come out. But there is one thing I know that it, I'm not meant to do, and that is not do an egg wash. <laughs> Jamie, bless his heart, did that, and they looked like sausage rolls. So I, I do know not to egg wash it. So I'm gonna bake these. Let's get them out of the oven. They smell amazing. They just look bad. Okay, I'm gonna let these cool completely, and then I'll come back and give these a try probably later this evening with some tea. Cause they smell really good. I'm sure they taste great, but I think they're a bit dry and I do not think I would come in first place in the technical with these. Unless everyone else just like caught theirs on fire. All right, here are my fig rolls. They have cooled down. I've plated them on this little plate here to try to make them look kind of nice. They smell great, but the dough is rather dry. And now that I've thought about it, I think the fact that I used gluten-free flour has something to do with that. I've noticed in my baking where I've used measure for measure or just gluten-free flour in general, the batters or the doughs or whatever it is always ends up being a bit dry. So I have a feeling that had something to do with it. It's not a dough that's very easy to work with. The reason regular dough is so pliable is because gluten is built and all that kind of thing, but obviously there's no gluten here. So there's not a lot of stretchiness or a lot of give. So I think that might have something to do with it. Not making excuses, just purely making an observation. Uh, I would be interested to try this with regular flour and just see if there's a difference. But anyway, I'm eager to give these a try. I'm going to pour my tea first because these spices would go great with tea. So I have my tea. This is a ginger chocolate rubos. 
that uh, my husband, instead of flowers, because I'm this kind of a girl, he got me some tea from this tea shop, that tea and spices shop that we discovered on our honeymoon in New York City back in December of 2019, if you could believe <laughs> BC before COVID, right before COVID. But anyway, great little tea shop. They're called Spices and Teas, like as in like teasing, T-E-A-S-E. -E. But anyway, this is one of my favorites. So instead of flowers, he replenished my tea supply. But I think this will go really well with these fig rolls. So I'm gonna go with a small one. This is one of the ones that turned out, I think the best. I've got minimal cracking on the top. It's a bit thick on the bottom, but you can see where that's sealed and it did crack along the seal. But anyway, let's give it a try. It's dry, but very tasty. It tastes like a fig roll. This isn't much of a grand interpretation of what you would have with a fig Newton. I mean, the fig is obviously very pronounced. I like that that's the main sweetness I'm getting is from the, the fig. The spice is subtle. I would probably go a bit more heavy handed with the spices. And if I were to make this my own recipe, oh my gosh, am I correcting Paul Hollywood? I cannot say it like that. Hmm, no, that's not what I'm saying at all. I'm just saying if I were to make this, I would probably try to spice the dough a little bit. No, I can't. I can't correct Paul Hollywood. I'm not trying to correct Paul Hollywood. No, <laughs> it's a perfect recipe. I wouldn't change anything about it. Maybe he would be proud that I'm trying to elevate. There you go. But yeah, I would probably spice the dough. The thing that's popping out to me is that the dough is quite bland, but I, I mean, it tastes just like a Fig Newton with a little bit less of the artificial sweetener taste. This is a more pure Fig Newton. Nothing remarkable, I would say, but it's good and I'm gonna have them for breakfast. This was my first technical challenge of the Bake Off series. It's not the last technical challenge. If you remember from the previous episodes, I mentioned the rules, I need to do two more technical challenges and I will. Uh, but yeah, this was, I can completely understand why this is technically difficult. It's not anything extraordinary in terms of its innovation. It's something that the bakers would know how to do, make a filling, make a dough, but it's those things I think when you get down to it, they're difficult to execute from memory. Um, I certainly did not do this from memory, but as you can see, I had a, I had a recipe from Paul Hollywood himself and mine still turned out this way. Like I said, I do think it has something to do with the flour that I used. Unfortunately, there's not much I can change about that. Dietary restrictions are what they are. Um, but I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, give it a like. And if you are interested in this Bake Off series, then please subscribe. We have eight more weeks to go. And I hope to see you next week during bread week. Oh my gosh, the dreaded bread week. I'm not even on the show where bread week is like a huge deal. And I'm nervous about bread week. I haven't made bread in a very long time, which I'll get into in the next episode, but I look forward to seeing you there.